Was the Bible written by man or written by God? Today, I'm going to give you five undeniable prophecies that Jesus fulfilled perfectly at his birth that prove divine authorship of the Bible. That's coming up next on The B. Hey friends, my name is Alan Parr. Thank you all so much for tuning into The Beat. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new, consider subscribing. It's been estimated that during Jesus' lifetime, he fulfilled more than 300 prophecies. Now, for the skeptic out there who just says, you know what, this was just a coincidence, Jesus just happened to be at the right place at the right time, a study was done to show that the likelihood of any human being being able to fulfill eight of these 300 prophecies in one lifetime is like one out of 10 to the 21st power, which basically means if you're not a mathematician, that means it was literally humanly impossible for anyone to be able to fulfill these prophecies, which lets us know that the Bible that we're reading today, my friends, was not written by man, but it was written by God. And so here are five prophecies that Jesus fulfilled at his birth with perfect accuracy. And the first one actually shows up in the very first verse of the Bible, Matthew chapter one, verse one. And it says, this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Now that may not mean anything to us today, but essentially what Matthew was trying to do is that he was trying to prove that Jesus indeed was qualified and had the right to be called the king of the Jews. And so the first thing that he had to prove through the lineage of Jesus was the fact that he was related to Abraham, a sense he was a pure Jew. But more importantly than that, he also had to prove that he was related to David. Why? Because if you jump back to the Old Testament, God had made a special promise to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16, which says, your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time and your throne will be secure forever. Now there is no possible way for someone throne to be established forever unless the person sitting on the throne is eternal. And this is the reason why throughout his life and ministry, Jesus was referred oftentimes to the son of David, which essentially is saying he is qualified and he has the right because he's related to David to be able to sit on the throne and to be called king of the Jews. The second prophecy that Jesus fulfilled at his birth is probably the most well-known and most popular one, and that is him being born of a virgin. And this was prophesied way back, almost some 700 years before Jesus Christ was born through the prophet Isaiah, chapter seven, verse 14, which says, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So how do we know that this prophecy is really talking about the birth of Jesus Christ and not something that was supposed to happen during Isaiah's lifetime? Well, my friend, it's simple. Since the time Isaiah gave this prophecy throughout history, all the way leading up to the birth of Jesus Christ and beyond, there has never at one point in history ever been a man child that has been born through a virgin. And Matthew in chapter one records the fulfillment of this prophecy in verse 22. It says, all of this this, speaking of the virgin birth, occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The third prophecy that Jesus fulfilled at his birth is actually the one that I find the most interesting, and that is the very fact that the very place of Jesus' birth was prophesied in the Old Testament. Micah chapter five, verse two says this, but you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. Now watch this now whose origins are from old, from ancient times. And that little phrase right there lets us know that this prophecy could not be talking about anyone else other than Jesus, who was God himself, who had origins that were from old of ancient times. Now you may say, well, why is that a big deal? And how did Jesus actually fulfill that? I want you to pay close attention to this. This is absolutely beautiful. Luke chapter two, verse one, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire 
entire Roman world. Now stay with me here. It says in verse three, and everyone went to their own town to register. Now I want you to notice where Joseph, Jesus' earthly father's home was. He actually lived in Nazareth. It says here, so Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Verse five, he went there to register with Mary who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. Now watch this now, while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn a son. Now you may say, well, why is that important? Well, understand this, that Joseph's hometown was in Nazareth, which means he had absolutely no business traveling to Bethlehem, but God set up and orchestrated the events in such a way that right around the time when Mary was supposed to give birth to Jesus, a census was called and it forced Joseph to leave Nazareth and go to Bethlehem simply so that, for one reason only, that Jesus could indeed be born in the city of Bethlehem and Matthew records this as being a fulfillment of prophecy. In Matthew chapter two, verse five, Matthew says, in Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, this is after Jesus was born, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. So Matthew sees the very place of Jesus' birth as a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Now, because King Herod was insecure about Jesus one day taking his throne, the Bible says that Herod issued a decree that all babies that were born, male babies that were two years or under, should be slaughtered. And so what happened was an angel visited Mary and Joseph at night in a dream and told them to flee. Now, where did he tell them to flee? Look what it says here in verse 13. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Wait, what? Egypt? Why would they go to Egypt? Let's keep reading. It says here, stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So they stayed there until the time of Herod's death. And notice that Matthew sees this move to Egypt as a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. He says here in verse 15, and so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. So do you see how God is divinely orchestrating all of the events around Jesus' birth to ensure that every single prophecy that was written about Jesus in the Old Testament indeed is going to come to pass. The fifth and final one is a sad one, and that is the massacre of newborn children. As I said, King Herod had issued a decree that went out throughout the land to slaughter all of the male boys two years or under, and unfortunately, that sad, tragic event did indeed occur. And as you could anticipate, many of the women were weeping over the death of their newborn children. And Matthew sees this as a fulfillment of prophecy spoken hundreds of years ago by the prophet Jeremiah. Matthew chapter two, verse 17 says, then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, a little place uh, just uh, around the city of Jerusalem, weeping and great mourning, Rachel, which is a synonym for Israel, weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they they are no more. My friends, no other religion out there can boast of having such specific details prophesied about their religious leader's birth and then fulfilled by the leader himself with perfect accuracy. This and many other prophecies that were fulfilled in Jesus' lifetime gives me great assurance to know that the Bible that we have today was not written by man, but was written by God himself. If you found this video helpful in any way, feel free to share it with a friend. Also, if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you would subscribe, check out some of the other videos on this channel. Hey, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time on The Beat.